idea from you that you suddenly about identifying fear, what have you, what it looks like. It's not a big brain deal. So I didn't plug my tablet in the last night. Got up this morning, it was almost dead. So I got wires all over the place. Father, love you and praise you. Thank you for your mighty words. Thank you, Father, in your word we find the mighty. Find abundance, find safety, find everything. Thank you that this society can be in when it comes to see and understand. Just apply what your word says. First Timothy 1 7, who knows it? First Timothy 1 7, for God. Amen. But God, God not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and self love. So if fear is present, now we're not talking about the fear of God, we need to have a fear of God as a call, a respect of God, a faith, a reverence of Him and His presence and He is. So we're talking about this fear that is it not, it's the fight or flight or the freeze. Now God's given us that. In our bodies, in order to get us to safety. Okay? How many of you experienced fear in that regard? And you get the rush of adrenaline or whatever, and you're able to do what needs to be done, but then you get to a safe place, the levels go back to normal, what have you. It's amazing this body that God is creating and the adrenaline, the release of that into our bodies. And we can do incredible feats with that. Okay. But I'm talking about being in a place that is peace, where fear is not speaking. It, it speaks, but we're not listening to her. We're telling it to be quiet, to shut up. Yeah. We're talking about identifying fear. Simply put, it is identifying lies we have believed. I believe fear is the total opposite of faith, and faith is believing what the Father says is true. Says in his word concerning you, do you know that you can stand on that with others? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. The enemy's tactic is to come against God's word. I believe that's ultimately what he does. He comes against God's word because if he can steal God's word from us, then he can sub his word to us. Okay? So his ultimate deal is to come and steal. That's why John 10 10 says, The thief cometh but not to steal. Kill and destroy. The first thing you must do is steal, and that's steal the word of God in order to bring about the other things that he wants to do. The enemy's tactics is come against God's word. God's word is knowledge within the context of the Bible. Okay. Many people will take and make assumptions or insert things in scripture. I'm going to tell you that's not biblical. Where the word has to be based upon the word. You can't take anything else and insert it in there and say that that's word unless it is interpreted by the word, okay, precept upon precept, okay? It has got to come from the word of God. But the enemy likes to put in many things to get us in fear. What's been going on in the headlines here lately? A lot of junk. And we have a tendency, I get it, it's a fear, to listen to that fear of the what ifs, what's going to happen, what may happen next, okay? Do you think any of these things that are going on right now are a surprise to our Father which is in heaven? So think about that. Think about our Father which is in heaven. He loves us. He cares for us. He provides for us everything we need. There's nothing that he's up there and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I didn't see that one coming. And oh my goodness, they got that one on me. They struggled. No. God doesn't get struggled. Hallelujah. Press forward to that. He sees it. And that's one of the things we can take comfort in is no matter what we're going through, that if God already knows it, he's going to see us through it. Amen. No matter what's going on, I, I take comfort in knowing that there's nothing that I face during the day that my Father in heaven didn't already know about. And, and if there's a temptation, if there's anything that's going on, my Father's already provided a way to escape. 
And my job is to just rest in the Lord, trust in Him, and speak His word. Amen. Your, your body responds to your own voice more than anybody else's voice. Did you know that? Bless you. Your body takes notice of your voice. Why? Because you have command over your body. Did you know as husbands, men, did you have command over your wife's body also? Let me give you a little example. <laughs> Seriously. When there's pain going on and things like that, we as men of God, we come in and we take authority over whatever the enemy's trying to do. We call it down. We say, no, the name of Jesus. Years, years ago, my first oldest, Alex, he was delayed coming out in the birthing process. He was being stubborn. And we had, um, no, it was, it was Chris, I think. I forget what he did before, because Alex was in, in the hospital. But Alex, we were in the hospital, and I remember he was delayed, and I spoke to him as a baby. And I said, come out of the Jesus. That's the authority we have. Some of you may not realize that. But a lot of times the enemy comes in, and he tries to do things, and we as believers, as men of God, guys, look at me, guys, all you guys out there, Take that authority that's been given to you and speak it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes. The weapons of our warfare are simple in the respect that they have nothing to do with any fleshly thing at all, but it's strictly spiritual and taking thoughts captive and casting it. Down the strongholds. Strongholds are areas within our minds that are against God's word. The flesh, though, follows suit to what we are entertaining. So if I'm entertaining fear, then my body's response to that is going to be the release of cortisol in my body. And it's going to release a lot. And then my body is just going to fall soon because God is not designed us to have that release for long periods of time. First of it, yes, to get us through fear, body of light, but to not camp out there. Does that make sense? The enemy has already learned our physiology. He knows that if he can keep us in a place of fear, and, and I'd like to add to that, stress and anxiety, that's fear. Because you are in a place of insecurity thinking that things are not going to work out. So you are fearful already that God's not got it in an underlying sense. He tells us, like, you're, you're fearing that God's not going to work out. I know God's going to work out. But seriously, you think of it, you break it down. When we're in stress and worried about the next thing, do we not know what the Word of God says about the sparrows? He provides for them, and he talks about us that he cares for us so much more. Did you know that God knows the hairs on your head? Even if you got out of the vehicle this morning and it blew it all off. He knows what's left. Right? <laughs> Cisco shared this. It came in with a bullet head and got right outside and it was so on. God knows every detail about you. Everything. Yeah. Strongholds are areas with our minds that are against the word of God. Think about it that way. A stronghold is something that is a fortress that is set up. And when God's word comes along, what happens is we're like, no, 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 I'm not going to believe that. But I'm going to believe this instead. And we don't just outwardly say that, but when we choose a lie over the word of God, we are, we are basically making that profession. Does that make sense? And it's up to us to say, you know what, no, that is a lie against God's word concerning me turning my family, and therefore I'm going to cast that thing down and I'm going to speak against it. I'm going to speak against it by the Word of God. I'm going to say no. I'm not going to allow that to stay there. So I've told you before the devil's come in and he's told me, I'm going to kill you. You're not going to live to be a certain age. I had a lady speak a curse over me at a, at a church when I was real young. And she said, you are not going to live to see your 18th birthday. And I was like, oh my goodness. Right before I turned 18, I had a massive collision 
in a car just, I mean, just shortly before my 18th birthday. And that rang in my brain. And I was like, oh my goodness. I didn't die. Totaled the car out. But that thing used to follow me for a long time. I've been hit on my motorcycle. Should have died. I remember going off the side of the road, veering off after I got hit. And the next thing I remember, I'm set back in the middle of the road on my motorcycle. Yeah, my motorcycle was damaged. The tailpipe was dragging the ground, sparks. The, where I had, had my feet on the back pegs, I just pulled them up to the front. And that area where my foot was, it was crushed into the motorcycle. I realized later my frame was cracked in three places. Should have died. But that thing rang out of my mind. Oh my goodness, my day's coming. I'm probably not going to live. And I was, I was 18 then. So this is like six, eight months, something after that first incident. And so that they followed me for a long time because somebody spoke it over me, and I feared that I wouldn't live very much longer. And finally, one day I got a hold of the truth. And the truth is that God wants me to live a long, prosperous life as long as He has pointed me here on this earth. And what I had to do was I had to renounce that thing and, and paw it down the ground of what somebody else spoke over me. Because why? I came in agreement with it. And I was waiting for it in expectation to happen one day. So here I am as a young man waiting for the day that I'm going to die and be snuffed out of this life early. And I believe in the line. That's it. Fear and faith, you need to realize and remember this, that fear and faith both project, projected in your future that both demand to be fulfilled in the spiritual plane. So those things that we fear and we entertain, just like Job, he says, the thing that I fear the most came upon me. They will project into the future and they demand to be fulfilled. That's why when we realize, hey, that thing's a lie, we need to come out of agreement with it and say, no, in the name of Jesus, that is not my allotment. My Lord says that I shall live a long life and I shall proclaim the name of the Lord with righteousness and, and, and I shall declare life. Every day. Our tongues get us in agreement with so many things that are against God's word, don't they? I've, over the years, I've heard my mouth speak things. I'm like, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't right. And I'll stop and say, no, in the name of Jesus, I'll cancel that. Cancel that in Jesus' name. Because the enemy is so quick to come along and bring things that will start fulfilling that. We could camp there for a while, but I'm going to move on. Second Corinthians, it says in chapter 10, verses 4 through 6, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So when it comes to the enemy, what it's saying there. It's a spiritual battle that we're facing, okay? For me to get up in the morning and literally get a, a sword, a sharp sword that if I was dragging, I'd cut your foot off or something, you know? And I'm carrying this thing around and I got a shield and I got all this stuff. I get it. We need to have the armor of God. But it's not talking about a literal armor against that spiritual kingdom. If I were going around and carrying all this and I was totally dressed up, I'll tell you what, I love Roman armor. Got me a Roman helmet the other day. Yeah. Oh, kid, I was like, last Sunday, I'm going to bring something there. I may bring it in this next Sunday. It's a Roman helmet. And it is cool. Really cool. Yeah. I'm sure with this. But I've always wanted the Roman outfit, the head, the breastplate, shoes, all that stuff. And one day, I'm going to go get them on Amazon and order them. I tell them, just order me something, you know, this and that, just order it. When I got on, I was looking for something that we were ordering, and I was like, wait a minute, if anybody knows about Amazon, that you can see all the orders that are out there and everything. And I was like, oh, somebody's getting a Roman helmet. Man, I've always wanted one of those. I thought that was cool. And when it finally arrived, I was like, wow, man. Levi comes in. It's like, this is for you. Like, cool. I put that dude on, and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. It's got the the, the red, uh, like what you call it, the deal on top. It's really yeah. cool. I'll bring it next time. Yeah, I sent it to Joe, and he's like, you look like a Viking. I'm like, no, I'm a Roman soldier, not a Viking. 
Yeah, whatever. I'll break it next time. Wear it for service. Uh, I can put I'll get the whole suit. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> but do you see the picture? That's cool. But if, if I went out in the world and I got all this gear on and I'm fighting that word, you know, and I'm slaying this, I'm probably going to hit somebody. Like, oh, I'm sorry, you know. No, it's a spiritual battle that we're fighting every day. And where is the battle that we're fighting? Where do we hear it? So what's going on here, okay? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and everything that is exalted, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So against the knowledge of God is against the word of God, okay? Because God's word is knowledge. And bringing into captivity, this is what we're to do, Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if it's against God's word, and we're continuing to just let it speak to us, then we're not being obedient to Christ, are we? We're letting that thing just continue to tell us all this man. It says every thought to the obedience of Christ, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That's the key, is being obedient. Because when you're obedient, then... Revenge is put upon that kingdom. In order to identify fear, or we can call it the stronghold of fear, which is a lie, we must know truth. So if you don't know truth, and you can't take truth and put it right here in the fear, the lie, or whatever, and you don't have this, you think that's true. The lie. But when the word comes along, such as this, did you know that you are loved with an everlasting love? The Word of God says that. He says you are loved, you are not rejected. But if you never hear that, and you're entertaining that I'm rejected, now you may experience rejection from people, and we most often do every day of our lives, don't we? But if we take that as a truth, and then say I'm rejected, then what comes from that? Then there's something, there must be something wrong with me. If I'm being rejected, that means something's wrong with me. Does that make sense? But if the word comes along and you hear that you're loved with an everlasting love, you are accepted in the beloved, and you realize that is truth, it doesn't matter that anybody out there rejects you. They're going to reject you. You need to know that. The world is going to reject you. You may even have family members reject you from time to time. But that does not change the status of who you are in Christ. Does that make sense? I'm not talking about knowing truth intellectually. But that should be a base to start from. But what I am talking about is knowing in our hearts without any doubt what God says without any compromise and having the confidence in the Word of God. And if we know that we know that we know, then when that lie comes along, you know, we may listen to it for a little while, but we have a tendency to say, tell me more. Don't we? Come on. Some of us do. If not all of us. But then you realize, because the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost doesn't just sit back and say, let's have this one for a while. No, the Holy Ghost is speaking, and he's talking with us. And if you'll just listen I guarantee you the Holy Spirit's going to say, that's a lie. I've had people tell me stuff, and, and I'm not even 100% uh, have, you know, like the scripture in, 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 uh, to be able to say, okay, send over here, blah, blah, blah. But I know in my heart and hearts, it's like, that's not right. Something's not right there with that. You know why? Because I got the Holy Ghost on me. When I get into the Word and I start searching it out, it's like, wait a minute. Okay, now the Word says this. Yeah, that is, that was a lie. Because the Holy Spirit does not want to leave you in a place of being vulnerable. So the Holy Spirit will always speak to you and tell you, I believe when the enemy comes and tells us a lie, the Holy Spirit's going to be there saying, no, it's a lie. And it's our choice at that moment to say, okay, I'm going to reject that. I'm going to get into the Word. I'm going to find it for myself what the Word says. Or the Word will just bubble right up. Because you've already been in the Word. I've had the Holy Spirit give me a, a, 
the word and just follows up. No, I don't even remember putting that one in. But the Holy Spirit is there and he's speaking truth. Amen. That's all the Holy Spirit knows to speak is truth. That's all he will speak. Fear is a peace thief. Fear is a peace thief. He steals your peace. And it even will steal your joy because it has you focused on fear itself. Yesterday, yesterday was a fun day. I've done a lot of tree work back in Texas. Back in Texas, you got flat ground. Oh, Joe, you know what I'm talking about. Me and Joe are coming over the mountains working, having to dig in the mountain. Behind these hills. Joe cut a bunch of these trees down on the side because it's ridiculous. They're under fall the fall and equipment. Yeah, I got a bunch of them cut down. I went up there. I'm a fan of the experience. When Joe got to experience, I'm going to come down. He picks me up on the excavator, sticks me up on the side of the mountain. Oh, the chimps all over the bed. I don't know if this is safe. Trust me, Joe, not to fling me over the canyon or something. But I get up there. I'm like, I need to get down to those trees. And it's on an incline like this. You know, cut the trees like so, you know, because they're going to fall once we dig into the mountain. We don't want them to fall on us. Joe called me up the other day. We're talking. Let's talk about the trees falling on us. But don't let Paul on the estimator. He says, about me. I <laughs> <laughs> but I'm up there and I'm like, okay, we gotta do this safely. Maybe call it shit. But I get a rope and I tie it around me. And I don't even know how to tie. I told I told Ashley was holding the rope. I said, I'm just gonna do a granny knot. Because I don't even you know what a granny knot is. And those are tough to get out sometimes, but I know it ain't gonna come out. <laughs> We're going to look around this tree and he's going to lower me down. <clears throat> I'm going to get down there with this chainsaw and I'm going to cut those trees down. And immediately, starting to go down, fear started coming over. This is what I started hearing. That tree, when you cut it, it's going to come back and it's going to fall on you. Now, if you'd been up there and you'd seen it, here's the side of the mountain like this. And the tree's leaning like this on this incline. There is no way, unless we get maybe 400 mile an hour winds, to blow back that tree on me. And I had to start speaking to myself and saying, well, it's going to fall back. It's already leaned off the mountain. It's going to fall down there. And so my first cut, I was speaking to myself, this tree's not going to fall on me. As you know, me with the road. I look up at it and say, well, that tree down. I want you to start pulling me down. <laughs> But do want to get away from it, you know? You should not cut through it. Oh, that is an awesome thing to see. You ever been with your daddy's that trees? Pretty cool. Man. And tree. Those, those are the most dangerous trees. Dangerous. But I didn't start speaking truth to myself. Now, the truth of that, well, number one, if, if I had done something stupid, yeah, I probably would have been in my life. But the tree was there, and it was going to go down kill, and I knew that. But yet, fear was there trying to trouble me. And when that first tree fell, I get it, it worked. So I give you that as an example of something recent, of course, of yesterday. But you have to speak truth, and the truth has got to be founded in truth. Can't be found in anything else. Because if you don't, the enemy is going to just continue to speak more lies to you, okay? It is a stronghold. Typically, we're all facing things that have been traumas in the past. How many of y'all have been through traumas? Everybody in here. There's nobody exempt from going through trauma. We've been through traumas and experiences in the past. And when things happen that are similar or surroundings are similar to that, what happens is that trauma has a tendency to try to come back and speak to us again, get us in a deeper place of fear. It's a thief that steals your peace. Remember, fear projects into the future and demands to be fulfilled. Your peace and your joy are still there. A lot of times, I think that we envision 
that it's gone and I got to go out somewhere and try to find it, get back a hold of it. But it's still there because it's based on God's word. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah? And it's a matter of speaking the word and saying, I like to say it, shut up, devil. You got a t shirt. I'll do it. Your peace and joy are still there, but it's up to you to step back into it. We've been talking about asking, we asked the Lord a couple of Sundays ago to show us fears. How many of you prayed that and asked the Lord to show you if there's fears that you've been listening to? And did God show you? Okay. 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 The Lord's been showing us things. And when he shows us things, we're not to just sit there and say, oh, okay. And do nothing about it. When God shows you something, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to do something about it. You're supposed to deal with it. And you deal with it by speaking the word. Amen. Your fears need to be identified. And I would like to say they're not even really yours. It's a spirit that gave them to you. Yeah. But they need to be identified and then ask yourself these questions. Is my fear tied to recent events or did it originate from some specific situation in the past? Is the object or occasion of my fear a true threat or merely a perceived threat? Now, when I was up there working on those trees, I cut one down and it went down. It didn't go perfectly down because I notched it on the wrong side. And I realized, I, brought that, I think I watched this one on the wrong side. And it literally fell that direction up against the, the mountain on the one side. And it rested up against some other trees. And I was going down to cut those other trees. And that one is sitting there, probably about to gale it to me. And the next tree I'm getting ready to cut is right there. And the other tree's up here. I mean, this is big, big old tree. And I got in front of it and I thought, this is not a good place to be. Because that tree may slide. And so I yelled up to my anchor point. I said, boy, put some strength on that rope. And I climbed up a little bit, and I get in front of that. There's no telling how much it weighs. And I took my foot, and I pushed it, and it just boom, down to that other tree. I was like, yeah, that was not a good place to be. That was a true threat. But I perceived that, hey, this may not be a good place to be. And so I got up there, pushed it down, it was resting on the tree, and I cut the other tree down, and cut the other one, notch it, and let it drop. You know? I'm going to tell you, cutting trees up on the mountain is totally different than back in Texas. And my goodness, <laughs> there's a, um, they're a lot taller, too. Yeah? A lot taller. So is my fear wrongly associated with an event or an object that should not be feared? A lot of times, we overlay situations, even like I said last Sunday, we overlay even the way people look, the way people act, smells, things we hear from past experiences, past traumas, and then all of a sudden we're overlaying, overlaying them onto something else, another experience. And it has nothing to do with that. It may have been 20 years ago, but yet we're experiencing the, the fear out of that. And that fear is real because it's a spirit that is bringing back that trauma and trying to get you in that place again. Or just keep you in that place. Is my present fear-based uh, mentality persisting even though the relationship or lifestyle in which it is rooted no longer exists? So take this for example. If there was a trauma with an individual, and that individual is six feet under now, is there a possibility of that ever happening again? No. So that's not reality because that person is buried, they're gone, and they're they're somewhere else. We don't know where they are. Hopefully we're ahead. So the enemy takes those same things and tries to overlay them onto other people and other relationships. And a lot of times we're even ending relationships that should not be ended because we're fearing and we're allowing that fear to be overlaid there. Does that make sense? Is the fear I am experiencing a result of a faking fear? And I said this on last Sunday also. In faking, a result of faking fear so long as a means of manipulating people that has become real to me. Some people fake fear in order to manipulate and control. And they've done it so long that now it's a real place. 
and they can't get out of it. The only way to get out of it is by the word of God, speaking the word of God, and saying, the Lord is not, he's not giving me a spirit here, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And realize that it's a spirit. Let me ask you this. Thought processes. When you think something, is that just coming from like a bubble somewhere? Or is it coming from something that's speaking that, whether it's internally within you and your thought process processes, it's like lunch. Lunch is being prepared right now. We may get a whiff of some food that's being cooked here in a little bit, and then all of a sudden your stomach's going to respond to that. Your thoughts are going to be like, oh, I'm hungry. Probably won't even hear pasture anymore because you're thinking about listening to me. Get the sermon finished so I can get there and eat. Okay? Let me just say this. Some people have had fear most of their lives because they grew up in a fear based home. How many of you grew up in a fear based home? A lot of us have. But does that mean that when you're out of that, that you need to continue in that? No. Does it need to be perpetuated to the next generation? A lot of times we perpetuate those things by believing of ourselves, and then our children take those things on because that's what they're seeing. That's all they're experiencing is the fear that we're experiencing. Many have been manipulated by that fear, and now we're adults with fear driving them. A fear mentality is something that someone cannot avoid anything without having some form of fear attached to it in some way. Be it relationships such as family or friends or possibly a work related interaction. Fear mentality could also be coming from past decisions we made that didn't turn out right. When we've done things for that, like, well, that didn't work out right. When we're faced with something similar in the future, we have fear again because it's like, well, that didn't work out right. You ever shared something with somebody, expecting them to have a heart for you, and the next thing you know, they weaponize that against you? Probably all of us. You know, what, what does that do in you? Well, I'll tell you what it does for me. I ain't going to tell nobody nothing ever again. I ain't going to share my vulnerabilities. I ain't going to talk about this. I ain't going to talk about that. And I don't let nobody in, ever. Well, I've learned that that's not right. That there are people out there in the body of Christ that are sincere. They are loving. And what the enemy would have us to do is, because of these past things, shut, put a wall up. Shut everybody out. And not share. Somebody help me. Yeah. Mentality is also not the past decisions with babies didn't turn out right. Therefore, we could have a fear of doing that certain thing. But that's, that's what happens. Didn't work out. They didn't do that again. Well, the situation at the time may not have been right, but it may be there now. But because of the way things worked out in the past, we're like, I'm not going to do that. Making, making even just decisions. Because last time it didn't turn out the way we thought it would. This drives us to have others make decisions for us. I've had people in the past, it's like, just tell me what to do. Or you know what to do. Because last time I made a decision, it wasn't right. Just tell me what to do. Has anybody ever been there? I, I don't know what to do. Just tell me what to do. And, and there, there is a time for that. Get that. But we need to work through that. Because what the enemy does is he will keep us in a place it's fear-based. And what it's doing is it's stealing your sound mindness. It's telling you that you made a decision once, to work out right, so now every time in front of you, you are not going to make the right decision. And people become indecisive, and they can't decide. I've been there, and I'm just going to share this with you guys. I've been in so much fear in the past. I've gone to my wife and, and, and told her this years ago. I don't even know what to do. And I can share this because I know it because I've been there. 
They tell her, just tell me what to do. And thankfully, my wife knew, knows and understands that spiritual kingdom. And you know what she would do? She wouldn't just say, well, you just deal with it. You go figure it out yourself. Thank the Lord. No. I opened the door. I listened to fear. And now a spirit of fear was there present. What would she do? Take authority over it. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over this spirit. And I tell it to be mute. I tell it to shut up in Jesus' name to quit speaking to you so you can make a sound decision and make, make the right decision. And a lot of times, the like, oh, okay. I endorse it. Does that give you a picture of a spiritual kingdom that's real, that's there, and it's working in the background? It's like the apps I told y'all. The apps that we open on our phone and we don't close them out, they're constantly draining on the battery, draining on the life of our, our devices. We're the same way in that regard to some degree. When the enemy is speaking to us and we don't shut those apps, we don't X them out or whatever, it's continuing to draw and take power from us. It's draining us is what it's doing so that we can't stand and stand on sound judgment. Proverbs 14, 26 says, it's in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Well, how do you fear God? You respect him, you honor him, you reverence him. You acknowledge his word as true over what the enemy is telling you. So in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Can you have confidence in God's word? You mentioned. I'm telling you, I have, I have I've read his word and when I apply his word and I have confidence in it, I see the very thing that I've had confidence in manifest. But when I listen to the enemy, when I listen to the fears and stuff, I start to see that manifestation coming forward. It's a matter of what we're listening to, amen? And it says, and his children shall have a place of refuge. How about a place of refuge? A strong tower, a place to run to, to run into, and say, you know what? God's got me. This is the place where I'm supposed to be. He's got me. It's going to be okay. No matter what's going on. No matter. Years ago, I was reading about the Lord being our strong tower. And the Lord showed me, he says, yeah, you run into the strong tower, but a lot of times, he says, the enemy doesn't stop yelling and screaming. You're out here, you're, you're in the strong tower, and the enemy's out there shouting up at you. Hey, John, come on down here. Why don't you come out here? Can John come out and play? Come on out here. And you climb down the stairs, you open the front door, and you go out there with the enemy, and you allow the enemy to continue to speak to you right there in your face. He says, how long are you going to do that? Or are you going to stay here in the refuge? You're going to stay in the strong tower. Because the enemy is going to continue to yell and scream and try to get our attention is what he's going to do. No matter what. Because if he can get our attention, then he's got us. He's got us right where he wants us. And that chatter just goes on and on and on. Stop. And the only way it will stop is if we take our authority and say no in the name of Jesus. So the picture I got was that the tower in Jesus' name, you stop. Get out of here, you old devil. What's he got to do? Got to leave. Why? Because I submitted to God. James tells us to do that. Submit yourself to the Lord to God. Resist the devil and he'll let me from you. But so many times we continue to listen to the chatter. You know, shut it off. Just allow it to go out and out and out and out and out. How do you replace a thought? How do you replace a thought? With another thought. There you go. With another thought. So the other thought would be God's word. Amen. In relationships, a fear mentality tends to focus on the possibilities around relationships. Possibilities around relationships has a hard time being rooted in reality. It has a hard time being rational, and fear does, because of past experiences and they cannot take their thoughts captive. When we realize our peace is gone, we've not taken our thoughts captive, 
just need to check out what's okay. And replace that thought with the word of God. How do you know people are going to reject you every day? Typically. Maybe not every day. How do you know that? No, we don't look for that. Because if we do, then that's a fear-based mentality. But when people reject us, it doesn't change who we are. That's their sin. And if, and if we allow them to reject us and take that on ourselves, then what we've done is allow the devil to just kill two birds with one stone. Knock you out of the air. Somebody rejects me, that's their sin. That's their deal. Then we speak something. We tend to run with it and nothing substantiated it, but just something they heard. They heard, you know. What is your goes, what is the possibility? Listening to parable will cause you to flee even where there's nothing to flee from. Many years ago, I would hear fear and I would listen to it. I'd nurture that thing. It's just been over and over. And after about six months, I'm still there listening to it. And lots of it didn't even happen. But what did it do for that six months? It stole my peace. It stole my joy. And I allowed it to be my choice. Once I started learning how to take my thoughts and act, boy, it was a new life. Take my thoughts captive and say, no, 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 I'm not going to allow that thing to. If a bird flew in here and laid it on your head, you'd probably laugh. It's <laughs> <laughs> already laughing. I'm just saying the bird. <laughs> How what you say? <laughs> Let's say the bird flew in here and landed on his head. Do you think he would sit here? I know you probably, well, we might sit here and just laugh about it. But would, would, would Cisco sit here and allow that bird to stay on his head during the whole service? That was fair. That was feathers. Those are feathers. But think about that. Would you allow a bird to just land in your head and walk around with a shake? Yes. It would be fun to play with them. I would laugh. When we were in uh, Arizona, there was a bird that landed on my shoulder. We were at uh, late with the bus. I'm like, what is that? There's a bird sitting on my deal. And I'm like, hey, it's going to me out. It flew off. You're looking at bird. But think about that. Would we let it land in our head and just stay there and do some business, maybe? We're like, get what's with me? Man, that's my head. That's my hair or my head. Get out of there. It's the same thing with the enemy, bringing in things that want to land in your head that we put up with it. Is that so? Because it's stealing from you. It's not only stealing from you, but it's stealing from others around you. Yeah. Would you stand with me, please? You're faced with fear. Sometimes it's hard to ask ourselves some questions. We remind ourselves it's a trick. I think that. That's why it's important to come to church and put yourself around believers. And that's it's why it's important to be safe with people to say, "Hey, I'm hearing this." And I've been around people before. I'm like, yeah, "Well, that's what I'm hearing." They're like, "Yeah, that's bad." Like, okay, you're not the right people to be around. <laughs> You know, to, sometimes we can really go deep down into a little hole, you know. But being around each other, building each other up and speaking truth, like I spoke truth to you this morning out of the Second Thessalonians. We know what the Word of God says. Why are we worried? Why should we worry? Worry doesn't change anything, does it? Anything if not wear a hole in the carpet. Most people pace back and forth and forth, back and forth. 
I want you to go around and around and around your heads. Can I lead you through a prayer this morning? Let's just get before God. Has God shown you any fear at all? Anybody in here? Don't tell me what it is. I don't want to Praise the Lord. I, I trust when I bring the word that the Lord is, I, I trust that he's faithful to this word. Because I just speak his word. Okay? And I share experiences of things that I've been through and how the Lord's brought me through those things. I trust the Lord takes that and ministers to your heart. Okay? Let's get before God. Say, Father God, I love you. And I know you love me. I thank you for your word, and I am not left to the enemy's devices, or even devices that I have devised. Lord, I don't want to listen to lies anymore. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust that you got me. Father, I take responsibility for all these lies. That I've been listening to. Forgive me, Father. And I take responsibility for all the generations before me. Both sides of my family. Mama's side of the family. And on daddy's side. And I renounce them. And I thank you, Father, that I am delivered from fear. And I tell fear. Whatever that fear that the Lord has revealed to you in this service or over this week, I want you to just speak it out right now. I tell this fear, this fear of flying, whatever thing. I used to have a fear of flying. I got that one cast out, and I love to fly now. Praise the Lord. This fear, whatever it is, just speak it out. He cheats this name. Come out of me and go to the dry places. He cheats this name. Father, I thank you that I can have a confidence in your word, what you say about me, what you say about my family, but everything concerning me. I'm going to trust you, Lord, and give my life to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Is that simple? Your responsibility now is getting your thoughts and living in those areas of washing the water of the word. Okay? Word is what comes in and cleanses. It doesn't give you any foothold. It's a foothold. It's like a door being open. It's by sticking their foot in there. Sometimes we just get your foot out of my door, Jesus. Shut up. Leave it because you know what the word of God says. Enemy has to. Did you know that? I think a lot of times we don't, we, we think that, well, he's not going to listen. He's not going to obey. Sometimes people just don't even. I had a lady one Sunday morning at church. She said, Boy, you talked about the devil a lot today. And I said, I sure did. She said, Boy, you gave him a lot of power. I said, No, I didn't. You're a fear of Shouldn't fear them. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for your working in our hearts, working. Thank you for working in our nation. Just doing a mighty work there, Father God. Thank you, Father, for just continuing to go before us, your vision, your blessings. Thank you, Father, for this week. Pray, the Father, you would put someone in front of us that we can minister truth to help them through anything and everything. Speak truth to you. And everything to you. Thank you for the good wish you bless and sanctify us from our bodies. Ties and offerings that we can give to you. Much first step. Therefore, I'd like to shine forth brightly in Jesus' name. Yeah. Would you do one thing this week? Would you be listen to the Holy Spirit for somebody who's going to put in your hand? Do you want somebody to put in your path and you can finish your peace today? Want that? Okay. Let me use my picture. I know this one. He puts one. You're obedient. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, sure.